All right, so seeing that we have quorum, the September 21st meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission is officially called to order. Uh, commissioners, please turn on your microphones and start your engines. Uh, and we will rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Madam Recording Secretary, please take roll call. Lissandra Orozco. Maritza Rubio. Here. Rosa Garcia. Here. Mike McGee. Here. Jessica Chop. Here. Sandra Pena. Here. Madam Chair, we have quorum. Thank you. This is the time for the commission to um, consider matters under the consent calendar. The items include numbers one and two. Do any members have any corrections to the minutes or items they wish to pull for separate discussion or abstain on? Do I have a motion to consider items one and two? So. That would be the first part of the packet with the minutes. with the white pages. We have to approve the minutes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do I have a motion and a second? Okay, yes. All right, so we have a first and a second with uh, Commissioner Cha, and uh, who was the second? Anybody else do that? Okay, so Rose is our second, and we'll put that up to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, the passes. Abstain. Oh, except for Mr. McGee, who abstains. I wasn't here. Yes. Okay, so one abstention, and everyone else says aye. <clears throat> okay. All right. The next order of business is consideration of the regular business items. The first item on the business calendar is item number three, interim city manager update. I've never been on this side. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair Pena and commissioners for allowing me a little bit of time on your uh, calendar today. I see you have a full calendar and, and uh, so I won't take long. I'm Cynthia Kurtz, I'm the interim city manager. Um, and I think that maybe we oversold this by saying it's a city manager update. I really just wanted to come and talk to you uh, about your work, about conversations I've had with council, uh, about commissions and uh, uh, in ways that we're looking at to make sure that you have a direct um, connection with the council to talk to them about your work, what you're doing and what you feel you need to do. Um, I am, uh, sent a letter to your chair and uh, she uh, actually was the first person to step forward and came to our council meeting on Tuesday night of this week to present to the council what we have invited every board and commission in Santa Ana to do and that's to, to come at least once a year and present, uh, talk about the work that's underway, things that have happened and, and things that are coming up on your agenda. Really came out of conversations with the council uh, I'm used to working in different cities where advisory committees have a strong role and so I was putting on my agenda as I meet with the, the council members, I meet with them each twice a month, um, you know, what's the role of the commissions, how do you use them, how does it all work, and unanimously they are very, very favorable about the, the commissions and the boards that work for them. They are very interested in what you're doing. Um, but when I would talk about, well, how do you hear that and, and what's the relationship, it was more one-on-one -on -one rather than you being able to talk to them as a body, as a decision-making body. So we decided uh, that we'd start with uh, this maybe baby step of having each commissioner, uh, commission or board send someone once a year to at least update them 
and I, you know, you set the bar very high. It's always good when you start something new that the first person out uh, does a great job, and you did. Uh, everyone stayed in the room. They had questions. They were interested. Uh, I thought it went very well, and I thank you for that. Um, so that's one of the programs we're starting. Um, I, I don't really have an update, but let me talk about a couple of things and, and one thing that you actually mentioned in your remarks that uh, I, I was very interested in. Um, uh, you probably are interested in an update more on when I am leaving and you're getting a regular city manager for the long term than you are in uh, a much that I'm doing. Uh, and the council is moving forward. Uh, they had 32 candidates that applied for the job. There's a very strong um, a list of candidates. I, I had an opportunity to look at all 32 and they were uh, very good. They selected seven to interview in the first round and that's completed and they'll be having a second round uh, with three candidates. Uh, so they are unanimously picking these candidates and, and moving the process forward. Uh, so I expect that even as soon as this month they may make a decision and an offer. Uh, and so we're, we're moving quickly uh, towards bringing someone in and uh, I think no matter who they pick off of the list, uh, you will be very pleased. Um, of course, we're also filling the position that the uh, council adopted in the budget for the arts and culture position. Um, that was uh, a little bit even more overwhelming. There were what, 110 candidates or something? 170. Um, and when you hear it's 170, you go, oh, everybody must be throwing their hat in. But it was really hard to get it down to 11 candidates to interview. Uh, so all very strong. Um, and so I know that, that, that those interviews are, are coming up relatively soon. So I, I know you will have a, a strong person. And uh, that will uh, hopefully help you do your work as you move forward because tying together economic development and arts and culture and the growth in this city is so important and uh, uh, having a, enough time and dedicated staff to help you do that is important. Um, one of the things that uh, Chair Pena brought up, uh, I think it maybe came from the council first as a question, is the question about sister city. Um, and moving forward with the sister city program um, and you did a great job explaining the, the idea of starting with one and how you would move into to different places in the world over time. Um, I've worked with sister city organizations. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer in, in the program. Uh, it is not a waste of money. It is great money. Uh, to spend. Uh, I am used to working with sister city programs that are not run strictly by the city. They are nonprofit independent groups. The city may contribute funds towards them, um, but they also do fundraising and it's just natural that if people are interested in being part of a sister city program or part of a sister city event or uh, travel experience or making a donation, they feel more comfortable giving it to a nonprofit than they do city hall. It's a, a sort of a, a way of getting more community involvement in the programs. Uh, and I, I hope you will continue to look at that. If I'm still here uh, while you're doing that, uh, I would certainly be glad to recommend to the council that they, they pay for half of that program to get it registered um, and uh, we look towards doing donations or fundraising for, for the other. It may be something though that you'll want to work with with the new staff person, but it, it, uh, my experience has been incredibly positive and clearly the council was interested in that. Um, I'll wrap up now except that I would like to, to certainly if you have answered questions, uh, if there are things you're interested in, if you've seen things on the agenda or you wonder when things may be on the agenda uh, or what's going on in City Hall, uh, I might be able to answer those questions and I'd be, be glad to take more time if, if you still have a few moments on your, your schedule. Did anybody have any questions for a city manager? Mr. McCoy. Um, I First of all, I'd like to say thank you for coming to see us. <laughs> we appreciate that. Um, also, you were the city manager for Pasadena. I was. Yes. I was just in Pasadena today. I met with Dr. Susanna Bastida, who's now the director of the California Museum of Art in Pasadena. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for being here and um, 
I've heard good things about you from a lot of people, so hopefully you can get some things done in your tenure here. Well, I hope so. I've been here since May now. It'll probably be mid-November till we, we get the, the transition, maybe early November. And uh, I still live in Pasadena. Um, but I really love the city. I'm having a great time here. Uh, it is great people. Uh, the staff is terrific. Um, you know, people would like to talk about the problems. Every city has problems. And I've never worked for a city that didn't have problems. I mean, just, it's the way it is. And I think sometime, if I had anything to say about Santa Ana that I'd change, it would be that we talk more about the good things and the bad. We tend to be always talking about what isn't going right. And uh, there's an awful lot in this city that I think is wonderful and to be very, very proud of. I like working here. Thank you. I, I also have a question. So in speaking of um, sister cities, uh, Councilwoman Martinez brought up mm -hmm. uh, wanting to hear the update. And we did only have one convening of our sister cities subcommittee before we kind of put it on ice. So what would be the process to bring that back? Uh, I, I know we were trying to determine criteria to consider for um, the sister city selection, and I submitted mine. Uh, they were uh, to look at arts festivals and the presence of arts festivals within the, the contenders. Uh, placemaking initiatives, where were they with placemaking? Because this is something that we're um, you know, embarking on. Uh, tourism, how developed was their tourism infrastructure? Because that's another um, area of revenue that we would like to address as a, as a city. Transportation initiatives, do they have any? Uh, business and manufacturing, what business manufacturing uh, is there and are there parallels here with Santa Ana? And then uh, lastly was population affinity. I believe there are three states in Mexico that the majority of our Mexican uh, residents um, come from. Uh, I'm not sure what all those three of them are, but I keep hearing that there's three and it would be good to, you know, that's, there should be some points points for that, you know, but certainly um, I know that when we last left our conversation, Guanajuato hit on all of those levels. The, um, was it the city of Guanajuato? Uh, except for population affinity, I think it didn't, it was not one of the top three for population matches here, but we did have, a, we do have a significant Guanajuato population and there is a Casa de Guanajuato Santa Ana um, group. So what would be the process for restarting for, you know, reopening the subcommittee and starting the process of having people come make their pitches, setting up that infrastructure so we could start up again. I, I've never gone through the process, uh -huh. so uh, I, I don't know. And so what we might want to do is bring in someone from another city that has a sister city and has a sister city program oh. and let them tell you how they work with the association, how you apply to a certain city if you make a decision, even what their criteria was and how they went about it um, and not try to recreate the wheel. I, I would be making it up if I told you what I, I thought you would, you would maybe want to do, but there are people that have done this and that's a good place to start. Okay, that's, that's great feedback. So um, if staff could just take note, I had several people uh, at this, after the council meeting or you know, right after I spoke uh, tell me that we should look to Garden Grove, that Garden Grove has a very developed sister city. I think they have several sister cities and, the, and that it's been a, a long-standing program and they've gotten a lot of um, great feedback and, and they have good community involvement. And since they're right next door, it might be a good place to start. I know um, I know Fullerton has one as well, long long standing. Okay. And uh, so does Laguna. So I mean, they're they're around. So I think I think Cynthia gives you good advice, and maybe we can help you with contacts. Yeah, and we'll also have to probably bring on board uh, another person onto the subcommittee um, because we don't have Mr. Crib with us. Although we're lucky to still have Mr. McGee. Thank you. Thank you for your Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you for serving. I, I know you could do a lot of things that probably are more fun with your evening tonight. Uh, and uh, it means a lot to this city to have people that are willing to, to dedicate their time. So thank you very much. And if you have questions while I am still here, please feel free to contact my office. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> 
So the next item on the agenda is item number four, rest, downtown restroom art panels, artwork placement. Will staff please report on the matter? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Chair, members of the commission. Uh, we'll go through a very brief presentation today. If I can have you um, switch uh, the input there. Um, as you'll recall at the last commission meeting, uh, the commission provided us some input. We had the artist here um, giving us some uh, additional input on what the final selection would be. Um, so staff committed that we would come back and give you our proposed uh, final placement. So we've done that. So for the interest of the public, we'll, we'll briefly go over the, uh, the history, um, the artist, the uh, placement, and with your concurrence, we'll move forward uh, with installation. Uh, so really quick background. Uh, back in June, the commission reviewed uh, the rating results uh, that were done by an independent uh, panelist um, to look at the artwork selections for the third and Bush uh, bathrooms. Um, the top six were ranked, um, and we brought those to the commission, uh, along with uh, some of the additional finalists. At, at the July 20th meeting, uh, we received uh, input on themes so then we went back to the artist, worked with them to establish um, submittals that were in alignment with the theme, which was nature. Um, and then at our last meeting, we reviewed the proposals um, and we determined which artist would be granted multiple panels and which would uh, be receiving a single panel. Uh, the requirements, as you'll recall, is that it be a nature theme. Um, the artist received either one or two panels. The top two ranking um, artists were the ones that received the two panels. Um, we will be using vinyl wraps for the installation onto the building. Um, each artist will receive a $250 stipend uh, per panel. So for the artists um, that have both panels, or two panels, they would be receiving a $500 stipend each. Um, we would have an agreement with the city for a license, a non-commercial license. Uh, in perpetuity, and then the artwork would be displayed for six to 12 months. Um, this is the various panel sizes, um, which we have worked out with um, a vendor to do the installations. Um, when we received our initial quotes, we received some higher estimates. Uh, partially when we reached out again to some vendors, uh, it was determined that the quality of vinyl that we were looking at would have a guarantee, a non-fade guarantee of about eight to 12 years. Uh, we don't need a, a non-fade <laughs> guarantee of, of that duration of time given that they'll only be up for six to 12 months. Um, so we did find a different um, quality material. It still has a guarantee of two years, which is longer. It's double than our maximum duration. So staff is confident that that will um, be more than sufficient and that that quality will provide us more than enough um, and does still maintain a graffiti coating. So if we have some minor graffiti on the vinyl wraps, we'd still be able to service those through our existing vendors in order to make sure that the panels stay as clean as possible. Uh, the artists, uh, as you'll recall, are listed here and the number of panels that each of them had. Um, so this is the artist placement, the artwork placement that we received input from the commission and, and what staff heard. So we want to make sure that the commission concurs with this before we go out and um, place the order. Um, so here are the two panels, uh, Bud Herrera and Kimberly Duran. So those two uh, would be on the north facing wall of the structure. Here you see three. So you have um, Brian Peterson's artwork uh, that is displayed and um, you also have Jean Jimenez. And then on the back wall, we only put two of the letters, but those letters, as you'll recall, will say DT, and then the other one will say SA. Uh, we did not ask for um, drafts of those since they'll be making the actual artwork and then submitting the digitals. Um, but those would say DT and SA. And then the final one is Ed Terrell, uh, and that would be placed there. Now, obviously, you'll have to excuse our crude cut and paste on these. They're not quite to scale, um, but... Um, we wanted to illustrate what the, uh, the placement would look like. 
And with that, we're available for questions. We did receive the quote. Uh, we do actually have an established vendor relationship with the um, art installation company um, for this. So staff is fairly confident that we should be able to get these up. Once the artists submit them, uh, we will give them a three week period of time to submit their art. If for whatever reason it goes beyond that, we should still have some wiggle room, but um, the print shop has given us about a two week turnaround. Um, so that they can design, fabricate, and install on site. Um, and with that, staff's available for questions. Do commissioners have any questions of staff? Commissioner Doe? Oh, yeah, I, um, I, the last time um, we were reviewing this, I made a comment that uh, I really liked, I think, was it Brian Peterson? And he took like a, a small portion of the bottom. Mm -hmm. Is that him? To, uh, yes, to, you can to, see that. Yeah, so I, I don't know if can we request that of the artists? For all of them? Well, you know, because we don't have little plaques or anything mm -hmm. to describe like who did it, what it's about. Um, and I, I feel like without some sort of explanation, maybe it gets a little bit lost. If that's the desire of the commission, we can absolutely make that request and make it a requirement for the submittals that's that's not a problem well i mean i would also think that the artists want to know i mean would want their names to be associated with sure. their paintings. absolutely okay yeah yeah I'd, I'd also like to see some descriptions um the artist's name and what their intentions were and part of their application probably has some of that information yes already so we could already start you know, out of the gate with some great little pant little descriptions for these, and then just let folks know that if they're selected, they're going to have to submit some kind of a blurb or artist sure. statement. And what we'll do is we'll require that of the artist to submit um, their proposed verbiage. Um, as you'll recall, most of the initial um, submittals were changed when we added the element of the theme, the nature theme. Um, so the original descriptions that were submitted do not match. Um, these final proposals. So that is absolutely something that we can do. We can request that. The city would have final um, final print on that. So just in case the verbiage didn't quite match or we needed to clean something up. But that's not a problem. We can definitely do that and make sure that it has a standard look for all of the artwork. I, I know Brian Peterson had some really good descriptions. I'm sorry. Should we consider the limitations of the verbiage? Like how long should it be? Or... I think staff can can play with that. If we're just hearing the general direction of the name of the artist, the name of the artwork, and a description of the art, I think that gives us a, a enough um, to, to work with the artist to hopefully not have a page long mm -hmm. submittal, but a couple sentences, two, three sentences describing the artwork I think would be sufficient. Um, and if for whatever reason we need to deviate from that, I think staff would have the discretion to, to make those okay those calls. Okay, any further questions? None? Okay. So do we have a motion to approve item four? All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a second as well. So um, all in favor say aye. 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 Seems like this motion is passed. Uh, with unanimous consent. All right. The next item on the business calendar is item number five, public art walls, pilot art project at 3rd and Bush. Will staff please report on the matter? Uh, yes, thank you, Commissioner, uh, members of the commission. Um, the city received a um, request for a pilot art project um, interestingly enough, immediately adjacent to um, the uh, downtown restrooms uh, along the alley. Um, it's a alley that is jointly um, owned by the city and the private property owners. In this particular case, the uh, property owner, um, Ryan Chase, um, who's with Downtown Inc., um, submitted a, a proposal to extend the existing art panels that are on site. When the restroom was installed, um, there was an agreement between the property owner and the city that we would allow for some art panel screenings. Uh, we do have some examples in your packet of what those look like. 
Um, those were installed and, and were made a condition uh, of the restroom so that there would be some screening as the uh, restaurant that's immediately adjacent Eat Chow was installing a bump out to their uh, facility and wanted some screening in that um, the bathroom design wasn't completed when we started construction. As you'll recall, it was a design bid build. Um, so in, in order to give them a little bit of assurance, we, we allowed for those panels to be installed. Those panels have, uh, were installed by uh, Mr. Chase and his company. Um, at their cost, they are changed out monthly uh, with different artists um, doing the artwork on those panels. Um, there's been no cost to the city. We've not really had any graffiti or maintenance issues with those. Um, if they were, uh, Mr. Chase w would be the one responsible for, for those costs. Um, so the proposal was to extend that uh, along the entire alley to kind of activate that alley space. Um, our uh, acting uh, executive director of Community Development Agency, um, Rob and I met out there with Mr. Chase to discuss the proposal and um, staff of course wanted to maintain visibility so that it wasn't one continuous panel. Um, we wanted to ensure that there would be some uh, elements to be able to walk through that area as it naturally does that. We didn't want to have uh, people now have to make a big awkward uh, turn around the parking garage in order to access the alley and businesses uh, and things like that. Um, so we received the proposal. Um, this would require some type of a right-of-way permit, a license use agreement, because it is city-owned property. Um, and that would be authorized either through our um, existing public works department if it was a right-of-way permit. Um, because it is adjacent to an alley, we're, we're working out those logistics, but we did want to bring this to the commission um, as a receiving file so that you are aware of the proposal and um, would know what, what was going on, especially as we're uh, working on some of these uh, other projects. And with that, staff is uh, available for questions. Um, the the alley is a pedestrian only alley. Is that correct? No, it's a vehicular access alley. Oh, really? Yes. Primarily used by pedestrians, but it, it is vehicular access. There are um, trash containers uh, that are serviced through that alley. So I actually have a comment. Um, so I, I actually. Uh, I'm a little weary of continuing these panels along the entire length of the parking lot in the alley. And the reason why is because of safety issues. Um, there's already some really cool artwork, the, the, the suavecito, you know, mural and whatever. Um, and I think aesthetically, like, it actually looks pretty, pretty okay. Like, driving by it, I, I kind of like that little corner. Um, and... I think part of the reason why it, it feels um, uh, like pedestrian friendly and like visitor friendly is because the alley is not a scary alley, right? So then if we are then blocking off like every four or five feet with these giant panels, um, that kind of ends up closing in the alley. And I'm just thinking that like if you're at night, you're trying to get to your car, and you're like, oh, now it's like a scary alley. So maybe the, the question is, is, is it going to be lit, well lit at night, maybe? Yeah, or, might need or lighting. yeah, either, either like maybe better lighting, because there's only a handful of, um, you know. Especially um, in the evening, right? Or, yeah. or just maybe smaller panels so that you can mm -hmm. walk by, when you're walking by, like you can still see, so that maybe it's kind of like waist high. I don't know if that defeats the purpose. But those are just some things that I just immediately, when I saw this come through my email, it just kind of popped into my head that it's like, I, I don't want it to actually create a barrier because the idea of the artwork is to draw people in. But if you're creating a barrier or some, you know, potential apprehension for people to go there, then it kind of it defeats the purpose. I'm noticing that the mural on that building on that wall, that's well lit, right? It looks like lighting. That's the Sueños Revolucionarios mural? The, yeah. the one on the brick building? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was painted by a major muralist, a British muralist, I believe. Yeah, but, but there's it is lighting, well right? It's well lit at night, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm noticing that right now. So then the panels would cover that as well, then. Mm hmm. Right? So then it's kind of like, what's the purpose? 
So we, we, we're we hearing the input, um, and, and that's part of the reason why we're bringing it before you to, to get some of these thoughts. Uh, what staff will definitely do is we can we can look at the lighting and see what that is. I know that the parking uh, the parking surface lot itself has lighting, and within the last year, the city actually improved the lighting in that area mm -hmm. to add LED light, make it brighter, make it more noticeable. Okay. Um, but as to the specific alley lighting, I, I can't I can't speak to that right now. I actually okay. something that we can look into and make sure that we see. Uh, we are hearing what you're saying in terms of the, the visibility, so we can bring those comments back to uh, Mr. Chase and see if that's something that um, is palatable with him, and if it is, we, we can look at, at doing that, but those are it's good, good feedback for us. Is there, is there a current, currently a mural in that alley? Yes, on the building itself. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a really nice one. It shows up on, um, on one of, one the, of the attachments. Uh, and also, my comment is, um, I agree that you know visibility is an issue, and I know that, for example, in, in the Artist Village, which is so very well trafficked, before the little alleyway that it, you know is next is behind the Santora, between the Santora and the gas building, that was, you know, that was a place where uh, a, a, a lot of underage drinking used to happen. Uh, a lot of um, you know unsanctioned you know pot smoking used to happen right oh, there. Right. Okay. People used to joke it was a public living room, and it, and it really wasn't. It really wasn't hidden. But given our community, and given that a third of our population is under eighteen, and that we are a center for, you know, we we have a lot of dispensaries. And if I'm not mistaken, this looks, because I had a concern about switching things out every month, just logistically, that just doesn't, that seems unsustainable, like how are you going to give spotlight to the artist? But now I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, oh, it's because it's graffiti. Is it like a graffiti style art, like the blue lot? So they're just going to bring in crews and you pick six crews and six crews, are, and that is a problem. Because what happened is as the blue lot started to develop as a graffiti art, it's only open once a month, so all the businesses we were getting hit, the Spurgeon building got hit because those graffiti tagging crews, they will come in from out of town to the sanctioned graffiti area, but then when they're done, they continue on. So another place that's hit a lot is custom auto service, and I would ask staff to please speak to Mr. Escalante at custom auto service because he will share with you some photos that he shared with me last month. Uh, he got his uh, all along the alley where the musicians enter the, the Yost Theater venue. You know, it abuts his property. And he said that he has had that plate glass window replaced several times and he's not been compensated for that replacement. And he also showed me photos of all the graffiti, all of the marker graffiti tagging, the aerosol graffiti tagging that spills over from these areas. And because right now, as far as I understand, um, and I brought this concern up before, because of our young population and graffiti, I mean, I, I love street art. I'm a big fan of graffiti art, but I also understand that in this city, isn't, I believe graffiti is a felony at the county level because we have a document called the Graffiti Task Force mm -hmm. document, and in that document, it does not just classify aerosol art as graffiti. Marker art is considered graffiti. Etching is considered graffiti. And all of these items, even painting with a paintbrush with latex paints is considered graffiti. Um, so any unsanctioned public marking, even if it's wheat pasting, is considered graffiti. Graffiti, I mean, I mean stickers are considered graffiti. So any kid which is going to, you know, they're going to have all these items at their disposal except for aerosol art because that's usually more controlled. But everything else they can readily obtain. And if any of them are picked up, it doesn't come to us as a municipality. It goes to the county. And so those kids are now in the county system and are up for entering that whole prison pipeline. And, you know, these kids, I, I would venture to guess from the, according to the Graffiti Task Force document, it says that most of the perpetrators of graffiti are under 18. 
So that means that like a third of our population, I got picked up for graffiti, like when I was 16, and that's why I got shipped out to Spain to get over it, you know? But, you know, I'm very fortunate that my parents had the means to do that, you know? Most of these kids, their parents don't have money to pay bail. They don't have, you know, money to get them out of the situation. And of course, graffiti is a you know, we talk about gateway drugs. Well, graffiti is kind of a gateway entry point to the gang life. Here in Santa Ana, it is. Because usually it's younger kids that are artistic and creative and daring that one of the first ways they prove themselves is by unsanctioned marking of our public spaces. And now we're glorifying it with all these panels. We, we, we have a lot of, I know Mr. Chase is a big fan of graffiti art, like I am, but I don't know that he is aware since he lives in Irvine and he comes in and most of his most of his renters because this is to me this is a landlord a property owner that is looking to enhance and support and sustain his tenants which is you know yeah if I'm a property owner I want to keep my tenants happy but I also he also really needs to consider the impact that's going to have on our residents and our kids is he really glamorizing something that we as a city are think is such a huge violation that we turn it over to county because that then that doesn't match up if we're going to glorify graffiti then as a city we need to get rid of this graffiti task force document and and not make it a felony anymore and start to have some programs so that because we're going to have because we're going to have more kids getting picked up so we have to have more leniency and have more programs to be able to you know, get them out of that, have alternatives to incarceration. For example, in San Antonio, if you're a first time uh, graffiti um, arrest and you're under 18, you don't go to jail if you don't have a, a, a crime, a, you know, some kind of a, of a, you know, past history. You get to go to like mural summer camp where you learn about the mural tradition and you get to, you know, work on a mural on the riverbed, you know, on the riverbank. And, and so you begin to learn what the discipline is, you know, what the parameters are, what the fine art context is. And it takes it out of that gang world. It takes it out of that, that crime, you know, you've committed a crime world. And if that's, that's what we're supporting, then yeah, you know, then you can, then let's all, you know, let's celebrate graffiti, but let's not, then let's not incarcerate the kids when they follow that lead that a very powerful and very established and very valuable, you know, landlord is, is setting forth. Because he's setting forth. He's sending this message. I'm just very concerned of, of what that message means for our kids. You, you know, uh, Chair Pena and, and for the other commissioners that have commented, um, I, you know, you've given us very serious comments about this, and we're certainly going to take those to heart and uh, have a conversation with the proponent um, you know, before we do anything else. As, as, as Jorge had indicated, this is going to require a right-of-way agreement that requires city council approval. But um, I, I very much appreciate your very serious comments because it's a serious issue. And um, uh, quite frankly, uh, not something that I had considered. Um, uh, and the lighting, same thing. And the... Uh, the size is is another issue uh, hadn't really you know considered, and uh, I, I thank you for your comments. I, I just am I'm lost to the purpose. It's it's basically to because people are sitting on this covered terrace of Mr. Chase's restaurant there at Eat Chow, and when they look out and they're having very expensive meals, there's no ocean to look out, and they don't want to look at a parking lot, and they don't want to look at 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 a restrooms or homeless people probably milling around the restrooms. So in order to keep those, that clientele happy, he would rather create an artificial separate wall that, so they can all imagine that they're in Brooklyn or something. You know, and as he enhances and develops the other um, alley-facing businesses on that side of the building, he probably is going to want to put terrace seating in there. He probably wants to put other restaurants in there. I'm sure he would love that. And, and you know, and that, that would build a scene. But that scene's not going to want to be reminded that there's a parking lot and a restroom right outside their window where they're having, they're living their social narrative. The, and, they, and what he had indicated when we met with him was it was basically a, a beautification and visual interest kind of purpose. Um, 
picking up on the, the panels that had been installed uh, previously. And I think it is very beautiful, but it's again, but it does have repercussions that that he's been it's it's been encroaching because he's a big fan of the art form, and I'm a big fan of the art form. But in this city, with a fe, you know, with it being a, a felony, you're taking away someone's right to vote for life when they're under 18. And also because I do work with um, doing legal video for. Um, uh, certain social justice, uh, mainly police abuse and jail cases. Oh, I don't even want to get into how many horrific cases I've worked on with kids that are under 18 entering the jail system. And even if it's for, even if they're supposed to be separated from the adult population, there's so many times when that doesn't happen, and it's really horrific what happens to those kids once they go into the jail system over something so so minimal. Again, thank you for your comment. Anyone else? Okay, so um, moving on, I guess that's a, that's a receive and file. I don't think we can vote on that one. Oh, do we? So we don't need a motion on the receive and file. Okay, so we don't need a motion. So we'll move on. Okay, so the next item on the business calendar is item number six. Resolution amend Article 3, Section 1A of the Arts and Culture Commission bylaws. Will staff report on this matter? Uh, yes, as you'll recall at the last meeting, the commission uh, voted to um, have the start time of these meetings start to, at 5.30. Um, we were previously under the understanding that we would have to have the city council um, officially change the bylaws. Um, our uh, assistant city attorney, Ryan Hodge, informed us that we actually could do that via resolution of this body, and that's previously how it had been done. Um, so this is simply a cleanup item. It's, it's more of a formality um, because the uh, commission previously had voted for this. Um, we didn't feel that we needed to do it. However, in the interest of transparency and to document historically what happened and what the formal action was, the resolution is before you today. Okay. And I have it ready for you to sign after the meeting. Okay, great. So the resolution is changing the time to 5.30? That's correct. Do so we, need, we vote on it, right? Yes. Do okay. we need a motion or is it already yeah, on the floor? Uh, we need a motion. We need a motion uh, a and a second. A I'll motion. Okay, so, so we have a motion. So move. And we have a second. So we'll put it up to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right, so the next order of business are comments. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak before this body? No? Yeah, you could come up and then uh, afterwards just fill out a little form. And I believe you have a three minutes. Hello everyone, this is my first time here at a meeting. I just wanted to say thank you for your time. I don't have much to say, I'm just observing and learning. And I am, I, my background is in art as well as communication, community service and education. And um, I am born and raised in Santa Ana. I live in Long Beach and I'm very involved in the arts and community as well as education as I mentioned. So I just wanna say thank you and I'm observing. That's all. How are we doing? <laughs> You're doing good. <laughs> You're doing great. How about some water? <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. If, um, if you could just give your name to our recording secretary before, oh, she doesn't need one. Okay. You don't need her, her name. Oh, she called you. Okay. All right. Great. Um, thank you. And um, just do keep in touch. I, we are going to be having. Um, some kind of a button on the front of our city website that is going to direct you to our upcoming programs and activities like on the 27th of November, 24th or 27th? 27th. 27th of Oct October. October. 20 <laughs> so 27th of October, we have an unveiling of our first citywide mural, no mural, a sculpture exhibit, which is called Wings of the City, and it's going to happen on the corner of 4th and French at 2 p.m.? 
5.30. 5.30. <laughs> okay, at 5.30. And, um, and the public's welcome, and it's going to stretch all the way from, the, from Ross and Forth, all the way across Forth through the Artist Village, all the way to French and Forth. So it's nine beautiful sculptures, and it's the first time that we, that we as a city are you know, receiving a um, moving exhibit like this, an outdoor exhibit, so I encourage you to come and spread the word. We also have upcoming uh, grant programs that are very accessible to both individuals and organizations here in the city uh, that you can apply for, and we'll put notice also uh, that will be linked to that button. That will. Do you know when that's going to go live, Jorge? We won't. Well, before the twenty seventh, hopefully. For the wings of the city, that'll go live next week on Monday. Okay, so next week on Monday, there will be a button that will take you to information on Wings of the City, and on that page that Wings of the City is on, there will be a link taking you to the Arts and Culture Commission page, right? And that's where you can find more information about our subcommittee meetings, our regular meetings, and any grants and such that, or any calls for artists also that we have. All right, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so does staff have any comments they wish to share with the commission? Uh, yes, although I think you kind of stole my thunder on that <laughs> one. Um, for the interest of, uh, of the public, yes, the Wings of the City art exhibit, uh, public art exhibit, will uh, be on October 27th. The unveiling portion will be at 5.30 is when the uh, entertainment will start. Um, we like to think of it as a kind of community block party. Um, other great cities around the world have hosted the Wings of the City. Currently, it's in the city of Anaheim. Um, so it'll be here uh, October 27th through October of 2018. So we will be hosting it for a one-year period. Um, the unveiling date, um, as I mentioned, October 27th, uh, the program will start at 6. The unveiling itself at 6.30, and we'll be wrapping that up around 7.30. Um, we did receive confirmation from the school district um, earlier this week that we will be having an excess of about 300 students that will be participating in workshops in the morning. Uh, the artist, Jorge Marin, will be coming down to Santa Ana uh, for the unveiling, but he will be guiding these workshops for students, teaching them about art sculpture, um, and providing um, some hands-on clay or um, plaster or a couple different things and some drawings. Um, so it's really going to be a day uh, celebration is really what it will be. Um, the city's website will have a dedicated page for this. The page itself is live now. The, the carousel banner that you're referencing, that will go live Monday. Um, so we will be outreaching um, heavily to our community, our neighborhood partners, uh, Chamber of Commerce, the school district. So we'll be doing quite a bit of marketing and outreach associations on this. Also? Correct. Uh, neighborhood associations, Comlink. Um, so we're going to be doing uh, quite the media uh, outreach. Uh, we are trying to um, finalize some of the details for the unveiling. And as we have more of that information, the website will be um, having the calendar of events for the day and throughout the year. As you'll recall, one of the priorities of the commission was that we not just install the art, but that we program for it throughout the year. So the goal of the city is that we will have at least one um, organized event around the sculptures and not just around the main wings of the city sculpture, but throughout the downtown. Uh, they will be throughout the downtown in various prominent locations. Um, so we will be uh, coordinating those efforts. But at the same time, we very much want this to be a community art exhibit. Uh, so we have already started reaching out to OSHA, um, OSEA, OCTAC, and various other groups um, to encourage them to program throughout the year. Uh, there will not be a separate um, fee or application in order to engage with the sculptures. Um, other than if they're going to make reservations of public space, we do have um, the existing uh, reservation process, but other than that, there will be no additional fees or burden for any of the uh, community groups, neighborhood associations, or uh, just an artist or resident who wants to sit down in front of one of these sculptures and draw. Um, that's what we want to encourage. That's why we want to make them in very public 
um, spaces. So uh, I, I believe that our um, exhibit here in Santa Ana will be like none other that the world has seen. The um, only other facet that we're adding that no one else has also done is traditionally everything has been in English and Spanish. Uh, we are uh, working with the artist studio. The city will be funding it, but we will be um, translating everything into Vietnamese um, because we do also want to reach out to our Vietnamese um, community. So with that, that is all that I have to report other than uh, the city manager did mention we are finalizing our process for um, the arts and cultural specialist position. So we hopefully should have that wrapped up in the next month or so uh, with an anticipated start date sometime in November. Okay, can we encourage like an art contest around the wings of the city? I, and that, that's one of the components. So there, there's, there, there will be two sides to that. The first will be city-sponsored programs, contests, or the school district. Um, the other aspect is the artist studio does their own contest. Um, so the main contest that they will drive, which will most likely be at the beginning of 2018, uh, will be a photo contest. Um, they've done it in every city that has hosted uh, the sculptures, okay. and the contest consists of just photography submissions. Uh, with that, the, what they do for the winner is they provide two all-expense-paid um, tickets, hotel accommodations to Mexico City to go to the uh, artist studio and to see some of the artwork that's on permanent display in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. Um, so they do do that. That's something that the studio pays for and funds 100%. Um, but then the city will look at other creative ways, and the school district also has some ideas on, on some things that they want to do. Perfect. Have they done anything with dance, with the sculptures oh, in yeah. other cities? My understanding is that the studio but, has not. But, yeah. Uh, but if, but like there, if there's interest. Of, you know, no. Not, not to my understanding. Uh, they've been on, on world tour for about 10 years, so it may have happened in, in another community, but not that the studio has okay. um, officially done contests on. But if the commission is interested in something like that, we can work out what that would look like. Well, I take pride in my city, and I want to beat Anaheim. They only had, what, 60 people at their unveiling? Uh, Anaheim had about 60 people. Um, yeah, we can get, like, minimum 500. That would be awesome. Our goal so is about 1,000. Um, we're yeah. actually, uh, we'll be pulling permits to close the street off. Awesome. Um, French Street between 4th and 5th. So um, we, we anticipate a So a invite everybody, showing. guys. That's so cool. please share it. Please um, inform your friends, colleagues, um, everyone. We really want this to be a community block party. Well, I kind of actually like the, the, the dance connection because I think there's mm -hmm. thematically, like there's a lot that can be done. That can be done, can be filmed, and yeah. then put on social media and things yeah, like that to yeah, share. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would it be possible, Jorge, for us to receive a copy of all the programmed, already programmed activities, and then some contact person, or it might be yourself, if if any of us want to, you know, spearhead, or you know, start to in, in terms collaborate. of the, un the unveiling or, or year round? Are you talking uh, the year round programming? Maybe for the unveiling too, because co you know, Commissioner Rosa. It's for you know, the be able to uh, for the year round. It'll ultimately be the uh, for now. Please feel free to contact me um, at any point, and I'm sure Rob would would make a similar comment. Um, feel free to reach out to either one of us or Tay. Year round, we'll have the permanent um, arts and culture specialist who will be dedicated to these efforts um, and coordinating with with various folks. Um, but we are more than open to uh, having as many people participate as possible. For the program itself, we will have a short program, so uh, many of those elements are defined. We're finalizing um, with, with our contacts, but um, we're always open to expanding that. Yes, because you have a graduate of the Alvin Ely School of Dance here <laughs> from New well, York, right? and it would be wonderful to um, showcase, showcase that at the, at the opening, or certainly sure. as part of the, the um, year-round programming. Um, any other comments for from commissioners? No. Nope. Any comments? I will be absent next month. Okay. I might be too. Well, still determining that. Then. Um, I'm sorry I missed the last meeting. I was in the hospital. I would have rather been here, but don't always have a choice. 
Also, I want to mention um, Greg Escalante uh, um, died about two weeks ago. And Greg, or Gregorio, as his parents had named him, um, was very active in the art world here in Southern California. Um, there's been very nice uh, obituaries about him in the LA Times, the Orange County Register, the New York Times uh, the other day had a very nice piece on him. Um, Greg, of course, was very active in Southern California and, and in Orange County. He, organ he helped organize a number of exhibitions at the Lagoon Art Museum and then supported, started a support group for the Huntington Beach Arts Center and then subsequent to that, uh, moved that group to the Grand Central Arts Center and he was responsible to help us organize a number of very important exhibitions. He also founded Juxtapose Magazine, which um, for a long time was the most widely read art magazine in the world. Anyway, um, the university is organizing a memorial for Greg and that will be on October 14th at 2 p.m. Uh, in the Ming Theater and uh, the Clay's Performing Arts Center. And it's open to the public. Anyone's uh, welcome to attend. And subsequent to that, there'll be a um, reception uh, outside the art center that, again, is open to the public. So I just wanted to mention that and uh, acknowledge Greg and his contribution to all of us. And um, yeah, Greg was a real irreplaceable person. And he had a lot of love for Santa Ana and for the arts in Orange County. And he comes from a very creative family with his father who designed um, neon signs, right? And then Joey Escalante, who I did my first music video, was for Joey's band, for the Vandals. And his so father was also brother. a mariachi player. He was a mariachi player yeah, he was a member also. Of mariachi band. Well, they were a family with a lot of showmanship and, um, and a lot of community involvement. So <clears throat> we can um, adjourn in memory of Greg after my um, comments. Okay, so, um, so we talked a little bit about reinstating the um, Sister City uh, subcommittee, so I just wanted to have it placed on a future agenda to reinstate that and you know, bringing more people on board and seeing what the next steps would be to kind of open up the process now that we kind of have some criteria once we have the consensus of you know, who's interested and whatnot, just so we can start moving forward on that. Um, also, I just want to uh, remind you that we need to schedule our next subcommittee for the implementation. I, I do believe we already have that scheduled. Oh, um, do I, we I have a date? I we, believe we scheduled that at the meeting, at the conclusion of the meeting, uh -huh. we had scheduled it. Okay. Um, but we can, we can make sure that you have that. Yeah, just um, I, I just had surgery also, so um, I, ha I need some help with my calendar. So if we have those dates. Uh, okay, perfect. Then please do. So I can have that. Um, also, just to um, reiterate that uh, part of the implementation is that we do have need to create some kind of a mural ordinance. And as um, we have more proposals for more public art pieces like the one that Mr. Chase has brought forward, it might be time to you know, get rid of that graffiti task force document. If we're, now that we're, because we, when it was, I, I don't know when it was passed, probably in the early 90s or late 80s, but as a city, we were not so promoting of graffiti art and street art back then, and now we are. So it might be a good idea just to get rid of the graffiti task force document completely, just putting it out there, and maybe in place of it, establishing some kind of guidelines that do address graffiti, do address you know, street art, but also address the context of our, of our muralism tradition. You know, um, preserving the murals that we have, creating new murals. I uh, spoke to you about that we might want to, on a monthly basis, just send out something about you know who's applied for a mural permit, because I see murals popping up in every ward of the city. And they're such a public art form, the process of creating them um, in, often does involve community. And so it's such a great entry point 
to arts appreciation and to involvement in the arts, that it would be good that we are all aware when there's a mural happening in our community and that we can also let our council members know when there's a mural happening in their community because aside from a wonderful photo op, it is a great opportunity to engage with active groups that are doing, you know, in, involved in creative endeavors in the city. So I think it's really important that we need to create some kind of an infrastructure or system to contain all this art, all this public art of these different paint forms. Um, also, just want to, uh, I passed out, and I have some more here for staff. Um, we have the eighth uh, installment of the OC Film Fiesta happening. It's uh, launching on October 6th. We're one of only four cities that, is get, that are getting the, um, so we're doing the OC premiere of the new Chavela Vargas documentary. Chavela Vargas being a very uh, world-recognized um, mariachi and, and folk singer who was uh, one of Frida Kahlo's most famous female lovers and uh, so a big uh, innovator and uh, you know forged a lot of new territory with LGBT acceptance in Mexico and throughout Latin America really outspoken woman Chavela Vargas um, we also are going to be having some um, screenings over at the Musicians Union on South Main, which is a real undervalued resource since so many, you know, we've had the, the Righteous Brothers were part of that union, a lot of jazz musicians were part of the union, almost all the mariachi, including Juan Gabriel Session musicians lived in Santa Ana, and they were also, they're still a part of that union. So it's, a, it's, and it's, you know, music is a very vital art form, something that Santa Ana is known for. So it's a great chance to activate that space. They have a great parking lot, it's free parking, and it'll be all day music themed films. Uh, we also are going to be having, um, a screening of Orson Welles' masterpiece of Mag The Magnificent Ambersons about an old 1800s family and how their decline kind of ushered in the new modern age. And we're going to have that at the Heritage Museum within the beautiful 1800s homes that are there that are the remnants of our great county families. Um, also, you know, the great Bolivian uh, revolutionary classic about the woman warrior uh, Juana Arzurduri, and we have a large, I think the second largest Bolivian population in the nation here in Santa Ana, outside of D.C., which is number one for Bolivians, and number two is here in Santa Ana, and of course, Council Member Sarmiento also being a Bolivian, I'm half Bolivian, and it's so rare when we have uh, a, a major woman colonel like Juan Arzurduri, who fought with Simon Bolivar, um, coming and highlighted. And then to um, wrap it all up, uh, there, you can look at all the offerings at ocfilmfiesta.org, but right now we have also something going on called Pacific Standard Time LALA, LA, which was a response to the Getty-funded Pacific Standard Time exhibition series that happened a couple years ago that really passed over a lot of our Latino American, Latin American, Mexican artists here in Southern California, so the Getty has launched an entire um, year long, well, there was a year long, maybe several months uh, exhibit of our local art and culture giants. Three of the exhibitions are here in Orange County, and part of the film festival is a whole video tribute to Magoo on October 8th. October 7th is the Magoo retrospective at UCI, also, by the way, and that's at PSTLALA. -LA. If you write that hashtag in, there's all kinds of information on Twitter on that. So with that said, I actually had a question. Oh yes, yes, I'm please. I'm so sorry. I, I, I just realized um, the uh, the old city hall building on Third and Main. Who, do you, does anyone know who owns that building? DWG. Uh, it's uh, amusement park. Uh, it's They're an advertising an advertising agency. company. Oh, okay. Yes, the city sold the building. It's. Uh, well, yeah. I was just thinking, like, because I, I drive by that all the time. Um, instead of a big olive green wall back there, I was like, that would be like an amazing, like mural uh, back or a canvas. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I, I just wanted to know, yeah, if that was something that had been considered or. 
because it's a it's a really big nice it's a it's a gateway to our kind of to our downtown and i think what's so interesting about that wall also is that it abuts where our historic chinatown was you know right across the street we had you know one of the this is the third largest chinatown in california that you know our old founding fathers burned to the ground i believe in the 1800s so um, and now we have China back. It's she's back. So we have a lot of um, you know Chinese American leaders. We have a, a real dynamic Asian population. This would be a really wonderful way to pay tribute to you know, the Vietnamese community, Cambodian community, also that we have here, Korean community. This would be a really nice opportunity. I don't think we have any murals in our downtown that commemorate the presence of you know this very you know vital and vibrant population. I don't know if, you know, we could do, but we have a lot of partnerships with uh, Amusement Park. It might be nice to um, approach them about doing some kind of a, of a big, um, you know, mural in, a, in and around that area. It would be, beautif it would be beautification because uh, like a, like a five-story olive green wall is not exactly the most prettiest thing to look at. Yeah. Anyway, so, so just, 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 just throwing it out there. All right. Any other comments? Okay. Well, with that said, I'd like to return in memory of Greg Escalante, and uh, and I hope y'all can attend the memorial over at Cal State Fullerton. Thank you.
Oh, that's that one for Canada. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm leaving okay. at some time, probably right. the end of October, yeah. to, because uh, I have a property in Texas. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, so I'll be going Where exactly? In San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Are you one of the uh, uh, Hercules? I have been called. Oh, okay. So, so I was going to look at the Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, we're kind of a suburb of Boston, too, because we're only like seven days a year. So, we visited one. which is now expanded to creative, right, creative development because so that they can expand it to include technology designers, gaming, because they want to attract the gaming industry, they lost 